So I'm discussing the preparation of the metal complex dyes, you know. Metal complex dyes as the applications, applied applications of coordination compound, you know. As we have told you what the compounds are, we need to have a metal then we should have some sort of a ligands which can donate lone pairs especially to the metal atom or we can have some sort of a ligands having negative charge could donate electron to the metal atom. So this is how the <coughs> metal complexes, coordination complexes are prepared you know. What the people did really as we have an ideas that we can use aromatic amines, we could go for uh, sort of diazotizations. Hmm? And then we can use another coupler, you know, for coupling of the produced diazonium or salt and this benzene has acted as a coupler and we can produce this sort of an uh, compound which can carries uh, <coughs> this azo group as a result this will become an azo colorant we can convert it in azo dye through salt formation as we have an idea people let's tr uh, try such things as well you know for the preparation of metal complexes because we have an idea in such cases what is there they have the nitrogens with the lone pairs they bring in some sort of metals as generally right just M central metal atoms and they treat coordinated with those you know lone pairs with the metal through um, what one could call it as through uh, <coughs> donation of lone pairs through coordinate covalent bonds. What they could did uh, more, they kept some other sort of hydrox uh, donating groups on the couplers as well, you know. Like we have an idea the hydroxyl groups, the OHs, where this entity could act as a donor. They could also coordinate with the metals as well. So this is how people do prepare coordination complexes. Coordination complexes using metals and then using azo groups along with certain other donors for the preparation of metal complex dyes for wools, nylons and the dyeing of other textile materials. So this is how the coordination compounds, <coughs> the organometallic compounds, they have been used for uh, the preparation of metal complexes dyes metal based dyes you know this is how the people have managed because in azo groups we have an idea the azo groups carries nitrogens and the nitrogens have the ability to donate a pair of electrons through uh, lone pair donations and this is how they managed for the preparation of this is one of the examples so I can give you one more, a few more examples actually, just to make people clear how they would have used it or how they can have, can use it actually. People have applied as well, you know, as I've just explained. They carry this sort of groups. They bring in especially the chromium. Chromium are most frequently used metals in 
metal complex dyes mostly are chromium dyes that's why they are also called chromium dyes because most of the chromium has been used as a complexing agent there <coughs> this hydroxyl the phenolic acidic groups undergo uh, dissociations gives negative ions and then they coordinate with the chromium they do coordinate through nitrogen lone pair as well at the same time let's say they have another hydroxyl on this side and this can coordinate through negative as well and then in the same solution of the dye they do have water molecules which could coordinate with the chromium metal as well through the lone pair of the oxygen so that is how the dyes metal based dyes would have been produced this is sort of a basic structure that has been drawn here to give you an overview give you a, just a brief account how the dyes has been produced metal complex dyes only the azo dyes the azo functionality actually it has been used as ligand okay similarly certain groups which has the ability to donate electron like hydroxyl groups which undergo dissociation in dye solutions to become o negatives they could be used as ligands as well you know they have the ability to make bonds with the chromium the rest of the valency could be filled in by the water molecule which are present as a solution of the dye you know and those water molecules can give lone pairs you know this is how it has been really the <coughs> the structure of a metal complex dyes the people have used the azo groups as ligands and the rest of the Uh, structure of the dyes has also been used with their ability to donate electron they have also been used as ligands as well you know a few more examples the real examples where their metals do get coordinated with the uh, organic entities as just have shown you that the metal entities uh, organic compounds do coordinate with metals and they prepare they give us uh, so sort of, um, organic dyes you know have an one example with me you know i got it from the literature i've just drawn it I've really drawn it. I'm just redrawing, just to give you an idea about it. I'm just redrawing. Okay. It has also again here is some sort of matters. the same entity is being repeated you know same molecule has been repeated so i can write nitrogen nitrogen serving this entity yes they all undergo dissociations mean as they are the acid entities they could have bonds with the metal and then the lone pair from the nitrogens they could make bonds with the metals so this is how they have been used for the preparation of metal complexes over here what has been used two three different metals has really been used in practical basis metals like iron chromium and i think cobalt three different metals has been used with these uh, azo dyes for the preparation of metal complex azo dyes you know 
this is not always the case that we can use as a functionality as ligand this is not always the case but in most of the cases this is rarely has been used because as we have discussed previously the azo dyes are more frequent uh, in use in taxonomy, the they were actually in use, you know, you know with the passage of time due to the carcinogenic in nature, they have been banned a, a bit, uh, especially in developed countries. So, azotides are more frequently used in taxonomy, and sp uh, similarly, they have been used for the preparation of metal complexes. I but metal complex dyes cannot be prepared only from azos, they can be used from non azos as well. What are the non azos? As we have discussed previously, we can have a sort of, we can have a sort of an early heights, non early heights, you know. This could be done or at the moment we can go just proceed with this one and we can wreck them with A mines only. They do react with them and they what they produce really as we have already discussed in detail. The aldehyde ketones do react with amines and they produce amines. They produce shift bases, you know. Okay, so it's also an application of shift base as well. So these shift bases, the amines, over here we have a bond between carbon and we have a bond between nitrogen. Okay, so presence of lone pair is there with nitrogen as well. So people have used this lone pair in imine in shift bases as well for the preparation of azodides, you know, or for the preparation of metal complexes. As I've just explained you earlier, if we have a, some sort of a metal, yeah, this can be coordinated with the metal, you know. Okay, so we can repeat the same diode either on this side as well, let's say. same dye molecules, so this nitrogen can coordinate as well, okay. So as we have an idea, we can put in, we can install, we can produce some sort of the donor groups as well. Let's say we have the hydroxyl entities on the aromatics as well, they undergo dissociations, they produce negative charges which can coordinate with the metals as well okay so this is how the metal complexes of non azodies non azodi non azodi make metal metal complex dyes you know non dyes could also be used for the preparation of this groups. If your have more valences available, yes, those can be filled up by the water molecules as well. They are around, they have the lone pairs as well. So this is one of the example where non azo I would say, E means a shift bases have been used for the preparation of uh, metal complex dyes. So these are the brief few of the examples, you know, where I'm trying to convince you people that the metals, the central metals are coordinating with the donors around. Those donors are dyes, they are acting as ligands because the nitrogen can donate electron, lone pair of electron, any other donor can give uh, electrons as well in the form of negative charges or they could also coordinate through the lone pairs as well. So, 
coordination compounds of so many types you know specifically over here we are using dyes as well as non azoles we are reacting them with the metals and the resulting coordination compounds will be a metal based metal complex dyes if we use certain drug molecules over here and though the drug molecules carry some donors then the resulting compound will be a sort of a biologically active compound another drug you know two three drug molecules having donors could coordinate with the central metal atom and give us a new drug a new biologically active compound this is the basic concept behind the coordination compounds how they are been prepared actually the coordination compounds is an excellent combination of metals and organic ligands metals which are inorganic entities and then organic ligands through bonding through bond formation through coordinate covalent bondings and that mixture that ultimate compound could be used as drug that could be used as a metal based dye that could be used as a catalyst those compounds could be used as agrochemicals they could be used in polymer industry in paint industry and so many other examples are available they are also usable in electronics you know in electrical devices where they produce colorants colors leds oleds organic leds organic light emitting diodes leds what they really are they are light emitting diodes if you generate those leds from certain organic molecules they are called oleds oleds organic light emitting diodes okay so such molecules such complexes are being used for leds oleds for color generations in nano electronics and electron this is how i've given you a big uh, uh, just a brief intro about the metal complexes uh, coordination let me give another example maybe really. uh, that is important as well for the preparation of non azo dyes what the people have done really let me check that post yeah people have used it should be a paper okay In early ID part, people have used this sort of okay. So we have a, this sort of a compound where we have two aldehydes appendix out of the plane, you know, available for reaction, and we have access to such amines which are frequently available in our labs. Around this diamines, you know, the diamine, this type of compound, they're frequently easily available around us, so they do react over here. Something like that. What happens? They generate what they do generate. Actually, we have ideas. what they generate they generate e means mean they are generating shift bases or uh, two shift bases two e mean moieties are they generated people have used these compound like to coordinate with the metals you can write the other way around as well we can point the oxygens inward as well okay we can point the oxygens as well so they do coordinate with the nitrogens they do coordinate with the oxygens as well so this is how the people have produced <coughs> they have used 
non azo metal based or metal complexed metal complex dyes hmm? where diamine has been used with a molecule having two di uh, aldehydic functionalities they do undergo reactions uh, generating two amines mean two shift bases not two shift bases the single shift base but having two amine functionalities so it can be called as a shift base you know and then a central metal atom has been used for the preparation of polymeric compounds those metals have been like they have used nickel once they use nickel the color was purple of the dye once they use nickel as a central metal the color was purple then the metal is a nickel in another example they prepare the same dye but they replace the metal and they put in the copper you know they put in copper those oxygens were not actually taking part the oxygens are pending out no problems at least showing four coordinations once they have copper the color became brilliant red with the copper the color was brilliant red with the nickel the color was purple and the dye is a sort of a metal based non azo dye you know non azo it has been generated from shift bases so so this is all about the applications of coordination compound one aspect of the application that is the preparation of metal complex metal based dyes in one of the next lecture inshallah i will try to explain the coordination compounds which are biologically active mean those ligands will be sort of drugs sort of biologically active molecules when they do coordinate with the metal they give us some sort of a new uh, compounds with new biological activity so this is all about the coordination compounds their application for the preparation of non azo and azo metal based dyes if you do have any question in your mind related to today's topic any question please put Mm, you question in the comment area or you may approach me through whatsapp i will be happy to respond inshallah thank you very much for your uh, patience and time uh, i will hope to see you in the next lecture thank you very much assalam alaikum